A warm welcome back to Globetrotting. Subscribe if you haven't already. The 747X was among one of Boeing's last ditched proposed attempts to secure additional interest in the world renowned quad engine plane and aimed to try and redefine the series. Designed to upgrade the iconic 747 family, the 747X sought to enhance range, capacity, and fuel efficiency. Boeing believed that if executed correctly, it would garner more customers than ever before. So, what happened to this variant? Why was the concept studies? What are the core differences and was it the right decision? Firstly, let's begin with the need for a 747X. The 747X explicitly focusing on the X present through the 777X and other speculated programs was part of a broader mission by Boeing to bring a new era to specific aircraft programs through upgrades. This concept emerged during the 1990s, when industry trends considerably shifted. Gone were the days when the most desired aircraft was a high-capacity quad-engine plane. Really, we were seeing a new age of twin engine planes coming to light, providing something that hadn't been achieved before. Despite customers' desires shifting, this was also a period in which substantial markets were beginning to see rapid growth, and as a result, Boeing felt that these emerging locations and their respective airlines would require a more high-capacity alternative to drive traffic. While Boeing offered the 747-400, it wasn't a stranger to attempting to find ways to develop the broader series to fill niche requirements, or generally advance it further to meet shifting market trends, whether through the 747 and trijet or something else. By the 1990s, it believed it needed to get more radical and move ahead with something that would truly redefine the program and allow it to advance successfully into the 2000s. That was in the form of a 747X. In essence, it was aimed at filling a gap between the existing Dash 400 model and Airbus's at the time you may recall anticipated A380 Super Jumbo, which was dubbed the A3XX. Boeing did envisage a family of 747X variants, more strictly than just one type. The configurations put on the table were expected to range from stretch models to ones with enhanced range capabilities. However, the 747X would seek to leverage technological developments over the years with configurations that included stretched and extended models. With this model, Boeing hoped to retain the 747's iconic purpose while making it competitive with the upcoming A3XX and finding ways to extend the life of the popular series, which had redefined long-haul travel. Arguably, however, one of the more talked about features of the 747X was its proposed double-decker design, which would extend the entirety of the fuselage, similar to what the A380 would do, and therefore removing the iconic hump and shape. But it would see capacity increase, which would aim it to align in the direction Boeing believed that customers were beginning to head, especially in rapidly growing markets. I do feel I need to clarify that the 747X was studied in the 1990s, with some discussion still emerging in the early 2000s. This was a period when twin engine planes were coming through, and at this point, Boeing still believed there was an appetite for larger aircraft, such as the one I'm discussing today. Whether through the Stretch or the Base X, the multiple variants studied looked to provide a worthy solution to customers' growing pains and ensure that Airbus didn't steal the show with its A3XX, which was being studied at this point. With hindsight, many analysts argue that Airbus and Boeing read the overall industry in different means, and equally probably not the most optimal manners with its last generation high capacity planes, which while serving a purpose for some airlines, probably didn't achieve the commercial success that maybe was envisaged when they were on the drawing board. Despite Boeing's interest in progressing with such a concept, a 747X wouldn't see the light of day, and the final iteration of the Queen of the Skies would instead be the Dash 8 series. So why didn't Boeing proceed with the X variant? Well, firstly, the market was changing dramatically. While interest was present, especially across high-density routes requiring larger aircraft, with therefore larger capacity into slot-restricted locations, gone were the days where quad-engine planes were the only ones being considered, with twin-engine jets now being more favourable as their capabilities were only being extended. 
Furthermore, this aligned with the shift in many airlines' business models. The trend towards point-to-point flights rather than the hub-and-spoke networks meant that medium-sized aircraft bypassed major hubs and directly reaching smaller airports were the favoured alternative. While outliers remained, the obvious shift simply could be seen, especially across locations in the United States. When examining a new variant, costs would have also been a very important pillar in the decision-making process, alongside fundamental interest in the variant. Boeing needed to ensure that its investment in resources to make a 747X would net the return to make it profitable. In reality, the 747X would need significant structural modifications, especially if looking to extend the fuselage further to create a full double-decker that would also add to the modifications elsewhere to the wings and engines among many other avenues. While always required in a new variant, all these investments present many risks, and Boeing is forced to evaluate these risks and determine what is best in every conceptual design. In the case proceeding with it, well, it wasn't really deemed worth the effort. The late 1990s and early 2000s also marked significant advancements in twin-engine aircraft technology. Boeing's 777, introduced in the mid-1990s, was already becoming a major success, offering excellent efficiency and reliable transport across long-haul markets, all doing so with some pretty good capacity as well. Moreover, the early stages of the 787 Dreamliner were taking shape. This aircraft really did reshape how twin-engine flying was conducted in the now modern era, showing airlines that flexibility could be key with just one aircraft family for their long-haul missions. I look no further than United Airlines, who are really relying on the 787. They believe this aircraft is perfect for their business model, and no doubt moving ahead in the future, they've ruled out aircraft such as the 777X, instead focusing on the available Dreamliner variants and using this flexibility to its advantage. While Boeing would move ahead with the 747-8, developing the 747-X just didn't seem worthwhile, all things considered, and for many other reasons not touched on. As the 1990s approached their end, industry trends began to shift, and Boeing knew that it needed to place a greater reliance on developing twin-engine alternatives. The 747-8 would be released, but its response would would be, according to some, and maybe even Boeing, incredibly underwhelming from an order standpoint. Thankfully, there was at least a freighter variant. Moving ahead with the many variants studied as part of the X series likely would have been a pretty bad move in hindsight, especially when considering how the 7478 performed, and now you're saying that a 747X would have, say, many variants. Instead, continuing to develop the 777 alongside the emergence of the 787, which we know to have been a massive success, has allowed Boeing to compete with Airbus, which was moving ahead with its own A350. The 7478 maybe to a certain extent fended off some interest in the A380, but as I have touched on, both of those quad-engine planes probably didn't have the eventual success that maybe their respective aircraft manufacturers would have hoped. I'd love to hear your take down below on the 747X. What are your thoughts on the prospects of it? Do you believe Boeing made the right decision not proceeding? And I'd also just be keen to hear, do you believe believe the decision was the right one, but maybe the 7478 equally wasn't. Should they have explored something else? You can leave all those thoughts and more down below in the comments. Please take care, be safe, and I'll see you in a couple of days for your latest industry analysis.